Kiri Mwaga is a secretary for policy and legislative affairs for the political party known as KANU, is our guest for the next hour. Kiri, good morning. Good morning, Eric. Welcome to the hot seat of the situation room. Thank you very much. Did you get that message from ICE Lion? I did. Hmm? Yes. It's plan.icelion.co.ke. Visit that website. You'll get a lot more information. But it is about planning. I mean, that's what you do at the political party, right? Yes. You think about... Um, what the party ought to do. You th when you're thinking policy, you're thinking what needs to happen, what needs to come. So you're the right person to actually have a conversation with us here. Thank you. For your plans. I will take up that offer. Very good. Yes. Very good. That's what we like to hear. We also like to hear the day's proverb from <coughs> the CT. This week he says he's from some archipelago of islands in the west of Africa. Mm. Uh -huh. Yes, Cape yeah. Verde. Cape Verde. Yes, people keep calling Cape Verde. I've mm. refused. It is mm. Cape Verde. It may indeed call Verde. Verde. Okay. And that is exactly how Cape I'm Verde. Going. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or Cabo Verde. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. See, so somebody, that's what he's written. Yes. Cape Verde. Yes. Okay. Cabo Verde. Portuguese. In, in Portuguese, yes. Right. The dog's happy dream produces no meat. Wait, before you go into the... the we will take a proverb. Yeah, this man is a political party guy. Yes. Tell him that system of government again. Let's see if okay. he understands uh, it. Let me go to town on this one. Yes. Uh, one of the wonderful things about uh, Cabo Verde or uh, Cape Verde mm. is this. It is one of the stablest countries on this continent. Mm -hmm. And there are those who would argue it is partly because of the sort of political system it has. It's what you call a unitary semi-presidential republic. Unitary semi-presidential republic. Exactly. Semi-presidential in the sense that mm. they have a president okay, whose name is, is written Jose, but I'm sure it's pronounced Jose, Maria Neves. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a prime minister called Ulysses. Corre Correia Silva. Okay. okay. That's it. No vice president. Mm. No this and the other, which means they have a hybrid system mm. where the prime minister has powers, the president has powers. Mm -hmm. So that's the check and balance in their system. Mm -hmm. Something which works for them. Okay? It doesn't fall into any category that you could sort of like refer to and say uh, parliamentary okay. or presidential. presidential. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. So the president is still head of government. Oh, yes, he is. And the prime minister has executive roles in government. Yes, 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 he and does. the prime minister is elected by parliament. Yes. Okay. Mm. Hybrid indeed. It's hybrid indeed. Mm. And under <laughs> power sharing <coughs> structure mm. is probably part of the reason why it is, a, it is, a, it is a, a, this table. Okay. Yes. What is their independent political party called? You know ours is called Kanu. Do they have an independent political party? Mm. Yes, they do. Uh, no, did I write it down? No, I did not. <laughs> However, okay, we'll find out. That is a question that I will answer tomorrow. That's the job that we're giving. You're giving Kidibuaga that 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 assignment. Yes. Okay. Mm. As uh, an official of Kenya's independent political party, yes, will tell us the independent political party of Kibad. Okay. The proverb of Ali City. The proverb: mm. the dog's happy dream produces no meat. The dog's happy dream produces no meat. Yes. Interpret that, Kiddy. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. And uh, my big brother, uh, City. Mm. I think that uh, the dog's happy dream produces no meat mm. is that the dog would uh, wish that it has the hunt delivered to it at its feet. However, the dog must, in the same vein and breath, realize that it has to fold its sleeves, if dogs have sleeves, <laughs> and run after the hunt and kill it. Mm -hmm. And that is when it may have something for the day, and that is when it would have the meat. Uh, <laughs> she uh, uh, be a hope mm. that meat will come without matching that hope with work is not enough. Meat doesn't grow on trees. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Neither, neither does it grow in your dreams. Neither does it grow in, yes. in your dreams. Nice. No. Dream on. Yes. Mm. yes. Okay. Mm. Um, 
Secretary for Policy and Legislative Affairs. Yes. Okay. So, first of all, just take us through the structures of the political party, Kanu. Uh, thank you. Uh, political party, Kanu, Kenya African National Union, um, primarily is has a secretariat mm -hmm. that does day-to-day -day, uh, running of the party. Mm -hmm. Over and above that, we have got the NEC, which makes the decisions of the party and uh, the NEC has got representation of various um, sectors of the party mm. uh, of course there are the, the youth representatives mm. there is the women there is what you call the mainstream uh, part of the party mm. constituting the NEC mm. from the NEC we've got the the NGC mm. And then you've got the NDC, mm. which is the um, ultimate organ uh, of the party. Mm. Unlike most political parties, we don't have the position of the party leader. We have instead the position of the party chairman, mm. which is the senior most uh, position within the, the, the party. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why did Kanu decide not to have a party leader? I think going through our own tradition mm. that for a long time we had the position of the party chairman which for us historically was the highest decision uh, the, the most pow the, the highest position within the party in terms of uh, leadership and direction mm. we decided to retain that tra uh, tradition and while other political parties found it convenient to have positions of party leader and party chairman which essentially is to distribute positions and to contain a uh, uh, political fallout within the party, mm. we decided that we have a chairman and it's, that's enough. Mm. And everybody else can occupy other positions below the chairman. How old is Kanu? <laughs> More than we 60 years old. We were formed in 1960 mm. in a place called Tinganga Kiambu mm. in March. Okay. So that brings us to 64, I mean to, yes. It's the this oldest political party right now in the country yes mm. and uh, you've had out only four chairmen we have had oh. only four chairmen <laughs> <laughs> talk about tradition city and mm. stability yeah, stability <laughs> that is indeed true mm. but what is of interest is this huh? when you look at political parties in east africa and you, you look at the longer serving the one which comes to my mind is chama chama in uh, in tanzania mm. yes it has remained the dominant party. Yes. Okay. And yet, they also have a multi-party system just like we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. How is it that Kanu did not retain the power that it had? And because for the longest time, in fact, everybody who is in government was in Kanu at some point or the other. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, or are we going to claim that Kanu is really a training institution <laughs> where we... They... <laughs> they uh, 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 mature uh, politicians and then release them to form other parties so that democracy can grow. Mm. Why did Kanu not retain the power it had for the years that it actually had the power? Uh, I think that's a, a very legitimate question, uh, City. But, but then I want us to look at the historical political development of this country. Mm that after um, the time when we flattered with the single what you call single party era yes by the time we reintroduced multipartism formally in yes. the 90s there had been built up of political pressure in this country yes and so i think that part of kanu's loss in 202 and being unable particularly the loss at that point in time was its inability to our inability, I must admit, to manage the politics during the single party era and during the transition. Because you look at CCM of Tanzania, you realize that President Nyerere had the foresight mm. that early on in 1985, he decides that he has stayed on for, uh, uh, for an, enough period and decides to hand, to hand over to, to, to Mwini. And then by the time Mwini is bringing, uh, reintroduces multi-party democracy in the 90s, then already CCM is still viewed as by the people that it, is, it was still their best uh, 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 last hope. Mm. 
It was a progressive party. Yeah, as a progressive party. Mm. So when you get, get parties like NCCR Mageuzi, CAF, uh, of Ibrahim Lipumba and others, already CCM had demonstrated that it was progressive enough. And so in CCM's wisdom to manage this transition better than most of its uh, peers, I think that is where we, miss, we, we dropped the ball. Go to Zambia, the party of Kenneth Kaunda. It has been, I think, I don't, I don't think it has been able to capture power since Kaunda left office. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Yes, so I think that is the same tragedy we have suffered. Mm. Yes, mm. and I think we, to, we give credit to President Nyerere for that foresight. Mm. Yes. Kanu as a party, yes. I mean, as is expected or assumed for most other parties has an ideology. Yes. What is it? Oh, we are a center-right party, mm. and center-right means that we are a party that believes that uh, the government should only do certain things and let certain other, th then there are things we leave to the private citizens. Mm. We are not, a center-right party is not an interventionist, does not believe in an interventionist government. So as a center-right party, we are a party that believes in family values. We are a party that believes that uh, ideally capital should be in the hand of entrepreneurs mm. as opposed to state mm. getting involved in running of of, of enterprises mm. yes mm -hmm. yes has it always been the case for Khan? Uh, well there is <laughs> when life Khan as was it, Baba and Mama, <laughs> <it> was <laughs> of course there is life as it as as a, as a reality and then there is the ideal yes sometimes and realize that one of the biggest struggles in life is to bridge that divide. Mm. The divide between the life as it is and the life as it ought to be. Yeah. Yes. Do you find any political groupings in this country that are completely opposed to the position, the center-right position that can can occupies? Like, like, are there ideologies in this country that you've seen in political parties that are totally, totally the opposite of what Kanu believes in? Uh, well, if you scan around, particularly if you look at the major players, since we since we we left office, mm. the party that almost took a center left uh, uh, position was NAC, but it was for a very p brief period, and then it reverted back to center right. Between two or three to two or five, I think President Kibaki really attempted to engage in government interventions mm. but then i think after 205 after 206 you realize that it reverted back to center right and afterwards you look at government uh, uh, um, how government is run from 208 all the way to last to last general elections we move into something called flagship projects mm. and so when you get into flagships you realize that now government starts to to when it is implementing projects when they are called the flagships, now they are passed through acclamation. There is no go so I think yes. The only time, so to, but back to, to answer your question more more, more properly, mm. is that the only time we felt that there was a party that attempted to move from centre right was the duration between NAC during two or three, two or five. Mm. Yes. Mm. Today, yes. How does Kanu? live out its ideology i keep going back to ideology because essentially it should be the thing that guides and then we say that those who then enter into positions of leadership governance whatever it may be then essentially would carry the ideology of the party because essentially that's what that's the vehicle that delivered them into that position mm. so then how has kanu or how is kanu currently living out those ideologies that we speak of in present day yes. political kenya yes thank you uh, Buonasiti said earlier that Kanu has become a training ground. Mm. <laughs> we must, I must say from the outset that remember in, in the last general election, Kanu had two presidential candidates. Mm. The two leading gentlemen mm. honed their skills in our backyard. Mm. And so today, how are we living these uh, uh, ideologies? One, I think I must again say that. Kanu has gotten to the saturation level of what would happen to a political party out of power. Mm. The only place Kanu can now go is up. So then, what is the, how is Kanu living its ideology?
Kano today has got a very robust youth league. Mm. You can clearly see that Secretary of Policy and Legislative Affairs is a fairly young man. Mm. And s same goes to a lot of other positions within the party. But the party has given these young people an opportunity to uh, exercise mm. their talent and imaginations. Uh, uh, beyond that, we also have a very robust uh, campus, uh, Kanu Campus League where we are working very intimately with young people in institutions of higher learning mm -hmm. and trying to orient them into the type of country we would want to preside over mm. when we get back to power. Because, again, we believe that government remains one of the most powerful tools of collective social progression. Mm. Yes. Mm. Again, so not through interventionism, mm. but by ensuring that it puts in place an infrastructure, mm. an environment that enables citizens to then thrive. Okay. Yes, through so, private enterprise. So yes. the evangelists <laughs> of the ideology of Kanu yes. are what you've described, the youthful Kenyans, yes. whom you're engaging more robustly and using them to be the come in and be members and thrive in the party. Yes. How are they spreading this message? Uh, of course, they are spreading this message through their daily interactions mm. because we remember that we've got what is called the youth space in this country. Mm. So uh, there is a civic youth space. So even in institutions of higher learning, the young, these young people are asking themselves, which direction are we headed as a country? And which, can, which type of country or society do you want to have in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years? I will tell you something that in 204, uh, this country had uh, a wonderful opportunity to redirect itself towards its highest ideals. Mm. But I must also say on this show that uh, the country misses that opportunity because of the brand of politics it was practicing then. As young people, we are saying that we must teach ourselves to practice a brand of politics that 20 years from now, we will say that we were part of the golden era that helped this country redirect itself towards its highest ideals. Okay. Yes. Sounds very good. <laughs> Sounds like a boardroom conversation. <laughs> I don't interact with you. I don't, you know, there are days when you see the kind of youth wingers. Yes. Whatever they were doing, whether they were spreading the ideals or ideology of the party. Yes. Or we can argue about that, but you, they were visible. Yes. Um, in terms of being active and robust out there. Yes. Kanu isn't as active as visible out there as we've seen the other, other like you said, the other parties. political parties. Mm -hmm. You're yes. seeing UDA, you're seeing WIPA, you're, you're seeing, seeing ODM. We're not seeing Kanu as a unit. Yes. Being as visible as this. Is this part of the strategy or? Okay, thank you for that question again, Eric. Uh, I think that Kanu is a very robust political party. Mm -hmm. And then while everyone may believe that political mobilization only happens through political rancor mm. that a lot of our competitors have embraced, I think we have, we've been around. So with the benefit of, ad, of, of experience that we have, yeah. we know when to uh, robustly engage the citizens and when to retreat back and engage through channels that are established. For instance, mm. when the uh, political fallout was raging, and it was called mass action, mm. or others called it Mandamano Mondays and mm. Thursdays, yes. this country was crying for leadership. Through Kanu, uh, we managed to consolidate voices of young people across the political divide, mm. and came up with what, was, what is called Interparties Youth Forum. IPYF, maybe you have interacted with it mm -hmm. in other sectors. Mm. Uh, Interparties Youth Forum was an initiative of Kanu, and that is when young people met, young people across the political divide, in their wisdom, decided that in this moment, let Kanu lead them. Mm. And they, say they gave that responsibility to the Secretary of Policy and Legislative Affairs, mm. Kanu, mm. yes. So that is how Kanu is engaging, and because Kanu believes that <laughs> politics of pragmatism, uh, politics of purpose, politics that gives people a chance, is an ideal that we can still pursue and live for, as opposed to politics of dogmatism. Okay. Yes. Time for a break. Half past eight. 
Our guest is Kidi Mwaga. He is the Secretary for Policy and Legislative Affairs of Kenya's oldest political party, the Kenya African National Union, KANU. We are talking about KANU, the party, and then we'll also talk about the politics in the country. We're seeing a lot of movement. You know, there have been attempts, several attempts <laughs> since Kibaki days to consolidate parties again into one giant party. Mm. Is it taking back to the... Kanu days, you know, everybody says, <laughs> taking back to the days. old Kanu days. I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding to use the word dark here. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what does that mean? And how do you understand it? How to mean? I'm seeing uh, somebody has actually talked about being stuck in that traffic. Traffic between Voy and Mjitwande. Another issue today. Stuck there for six hours mm. because of an accident. And then it says, and then Kenyans started doing what Kenyans do. Mm. They overlapped. Into the size of plantations. <laughs> Quisha. So, you've told us what Kanu is sta- stands for, yes. what Kanu is doing to engage with the people. But then somebody's saying, oh, come on, you're coming here and you tell us, oh, we have an ideology <laughs> or a new center, right? In this Kenya. Yes. Tribes, my friend. <laughs> yes. How do you respond to that? Again, that is a very legitimate position mm. or concern that the political mobilization in ethnically fractured countries like ours is something you can't wish away. For instance, in this country, you know that there are instances where, not instances, but it has been the norm, that politicians have always attempted to take advantage of ethnic cleavages anytime they are attempting to get a political platform. Um, this has been so bad that it sometimes it does not matter however good a leader is. Mm. And that is why yesterday, in yesterday's standard article, where you might have read it, mm. uh, Secretary of Policy and Legislative Affairs Kanu said <laughs> that the president needs to be given <laughs> benefit of the doubt uh-huh. in his capacity to, to in his uh, vision to transform this country. Because I think in the last one, one and a half years that the president has been in office, one of the things he has done, of course less measurable but not less profound, mm. is changing of the tone of the politics of this country. Mm. Let me tell you something. When we left the elections, remember that the word Kagege or Togege mm. gained notoriety in central Kenya. Mm. And it was a term that was being used to insult people who they felt had, you know, betrayed the community or the tribe. Mm. Back where I come from, in 2007, we had a very ranking member in the cabinet in the name of Rafael Tuju. Mm. But because he was seen not to uh, tap to the to the ethnic ambition at that point in time, he was kicked out. Mm. And uh, that story is you know, uh, rampant within the country. I think that as young people, again, our presence in politics means nothing if it will not inspire a wave of newness, we are saying that we have a chance to try to be people who are the the, the people who are going to attempt to usher in an era of uh, national solidarity, Mm. irrespective of ethnic identities and uh, uh, and, and other considerations that politicians may want to take advantage of at the expense of national interest. What is Kanu's stronghold? Again, Kanu's stronghold is the young people. I I know you may want to from where? <laughs> <laughs> from across the republic. From across the republic because yes. the challenges facing young people in this country are not alive to are uh, do not know that you are a Luo or Kisi or Kuria or whatever. Mm. When you are hungry, you are hungry as an individual. When young people do not have a chance at proper education that would open up their minds and their hearts and gives them an opportunity. It does not matter whether you are Taita or Mijikenda. It knows that you are a young person who has been shot in the foot because you've not been given an education that puts you in a place where you can compete in the global economy. So the stronghold of Kanu today is this young people who are crying for opportunity, Mm. who are looking at the healthcare infrastructure and are disappointed that not enough is done to ensure that we've got a healthcare infrastructure that is second to none. Crying for opportunity to do what? Well, opportunity is everything my sister do. Hmm. Because when the dream of 
the, the reason why man at the very beginning moves away from what Thomas Hobbes called a state of nature mm. where life was short, nasty and brutish <laughs> is because of the, that desire, innate desire for upward social mobility. The dream that my children would have a better shot at life than I did. Mm. So that is opportunity. But it is something... What? I understand the concept of opportunity. Yes. And I think that, you know, you, there are many things that have been said about it. It comes so, but once, grab it when you can, etc., etc. Yes. But in Kenya today... Yes. Look at everything that's happening. Yes. And when we say that young people who yes. are affiliated with this party or any other party for that matter... Yes. ...are crying for an opportunity. Yes. I insist. Yes. An opportunity to do what? Well, we are looking at opportunity as an opportunity to live in dignity. For us as a party, dignity is at the very core of our political orientation. That when government intervention, that when people cannot take their children to school, mm. that when young mothers cannot raise their children in an environment of dignity, for us, that matters to us. Okay. Yes. Are those conversations being held at party level? Because everybody talks about how, you know, I mean, Erica talks about people engaging and bringing in the young people, bringing in young people then who are being fostered into leadership, who mm. are being then encouraged to take up these positions yes. at whatever level and then rise through the ranks. Yes. And, you know, this great responsibility is put on their shoulders, the leaders and the, the leaders of the future, the leaders of tomorrow, mm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm. But I wonder, yes. do they get into these positions? Do they get this? And this is the opportunity for me. Yes. That there's so much happening mm. in whatever, on whatever side of the spectrum you want to look at it. In a positive way, in a negative way, there's so much happening. So where is that voice that says we want to be part of this thing that is going to bring about change? Remember I asked about ideology. There mm. was a reason. Mm. Because now here we are and we are saying if this ideology that for so many people seems so philosophical yes how are you then able to bring so far it removed from the reality it is yes how are you able to then bring it to bridge the divide today where yes. things are going on and the young people are saying they're begging for this opportunity mm. to do what and i still keep asking that question because if it is not mm. to get into an arena where mm. things have gone so terribly wrong yes. and that young people are saying come on guys this is how we can actually fix it give me this position of leadership and mm. i will then be able to do what, this that and the other thing yes in the arena of political parties yes if that conversation is not being had we might as well be talking about anything else yes and it has almost become like the choir is singing that people yes. are saying give young people an opportunity Indeed. in politics come mm. on where are we going what's happening an opportunity to do what this is what is happening my sister and do mm. and thank you for that uh, profound elaboration uh the year 20 uh, 2019 2020 mm. one of the uh, programs that can we embarked on very seriously was the question of review of the party constitution the secretary to the committee that was reviewing the party constitution was yours truly Mm. If you looked at the membership of that committee, it was mm. largely young people, young lawyers. Mm. If you look at other programs that are being run in the party, they are conducted by young people. Mm -hmm. Again, I will tell you something about my party leader, my party chairman, mm. Senator Gideon Moy, that in the instances we've had a chance to sit down with him, he has insisted that young people who join Kano first must identify their uh, unique talents mm -hmm. and then figure out how their unique talents can be deployed within the party as a training ground because in the event that you are given place in a position of responsibility then you are able to discharge that responsibility with utmost diligence there is a slogan in the party that ready to serve from day one it is something we learned from chairman that young people are asking for position for opportunity mm. opportunity to serve opportunity to make difference opportunity to demonstrate that this country is not as bad as sometimes we've been made to think or believe mm. we are actually a very good country and sometimes we have been let down by small politics let me ask this question yes please um a youth-centric party like yours must have a strong youth component that's true what's the number we are in thousands i must admit again um, remember that by the time we're going to the last general election mm. we at in the year 2021 
uh, our party leader, our party chairman, launches presidential bid. Of course, because of pro political realities then, we shared that political bid because we realized that we had two sons of our own who are running and we could support either of them. <laughs> Again, remember that by the, that this time... This is Ruto and Raila. Yes. They are sons of Kanu. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So by the time uh, we were shelving that ambition, remember we had uh, robust party branches. You know what the political party says about party branches? Mm. And those party branches are com are, uh, includes, among others, the young people. So Kanu party has got young people in their thousands. Okay. Let me, let me explain to you why I'm asking the question. Huh? Yes, please. If I look at the president and his deputy yes, and the way they've gone about their business, mm -hmm. The one thing that stands out mm -hmm. is their quest for visibility. Yes. Whether it is in inaugurating a road yes. or whatever it is, yes. visibility. Yes. There are those who've complained and said, but surely as a president, do everything. Yes. Visibility. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now, you cannot go through any single day without yes. the president being in your face in one way or the other yes okay yes on the other hand mm -hmm. when there were clear difficulties without uh, within as you say uh, the former children of of, of kanu yes. and uh, the right honorable Raila Odinga and his party mm -hmm. had issues to say about the cost of living yes. again visibility yes every time those in power yes. would have something negative to say mm -hmm. about the odm leader mm -hmm. again what they were affording him was visibility yes i think you know where i'm going with this <laughs> yes so we talk about kanu yes we talk about kanu youth yes where yes. is the visibility <laughs> because that is what makes people know that the party is vibrant yes. and that the party is alive. Yes. We see it through the leadership the of that lead particular party. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now you are here today. Yes. Why didn't you come earlier? <laughs> <laughs> because I was working with young people in the Interparties Youth Forum. <laughs> now that you've asked that, you want to see more activities. From well, well, if can is to be relevant, yes, they have to be visible. Yes. Yes. You can't be relevant and then you're not visible. People, if people don't see you, then they don't really know you exist. Yes. Eh? Yes. You'll be a bedtime story. Yes. Okay. Yes. But when you are seen mm. and the things you're talking about are seen yes. and the youth you're speaking of are, are seen, seen participating and doing things, mm. visibility yet again. But then again, Mr. City, yes. that kind of youth are very, I mean, are out there. For instance, during the, uh, the People's Dialogue Festival, if you had a chance to attend, you must have interacted with mem with young people from from Kano. Mm. And again, remember that I was there. I did. Yes, I, I can attest to that. Yes, mm. uh, and it is not only that. I think that we also engage are engaging a lot of young people in institutions of higher learning. Maybe what you are saying that the visibility you are you think we should engage in is that you want to see us uh, conducting processions in the streets. No. No. Yes. You choose the visibility that you want because everything you've described here yes. is visibility at its bare minimum. Yes. And and, and and the truth of the matter is this. Yes. How will people know that Kanu is alive and well yes. if they do not witness yes. activities that Kanu is involved in? Yes. Forget the demonstrations. Yes. Okay? Yes. But then again, why should you forget the demonstrations? Yes. There's a golden opportunity mm. with the doctor's strike. Yes. Where do you people stand? When there was the issue of cost of living, which is still alive and well, yes. where does Kanu stand? Yes. What statements have you made? Again, yes. you know this word visibility, I'm not going to let go of it. Yes. Because you cannot exist as a national party and claim mm. to have clout when you have next to zero visibility. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, I think that, oh, again, it goes back to our leadership style. Mm. Mm. that I think we have adopted a, a fairly laid-back leadership style. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yes, and mm. that of course seems to make people like my brother City, City mm. think that we are losing visibility. I actually don't think you don't have it. It's not that you're losing it. You actually don't have visibility. Yes. You see, 
This is politics yes. we're talking about because yes. political parties yes. are precisely that. And yes. you compare it with other people in other political parties. Yes. You have to be a talking point. You have to be a party that people can speak about and, and say we've seen them supporting. Why do I give? But people are speaking about Kano having consolidated voices of young people in a moment when this country looked like it had been vis visited by the dark ages. Maybe it's different platforms. And the platform that Kano is, and you've said a mm -hmm. number of times now, Kano is active, but on several platforms. Yes. And CT has not interacted with those platforms. So. Yes. Is there a case yes. to expand the platforms yes. so it can reach more and more people? Yes. I know you're targeting the youth. Yes. Um, uh, uh, city, youth, city, not same was up. But no. is there a platform no. where city would think? <laughs> city can interact with those platforms. Yes. Yes. I think, my brother, city, one thing is that after the general election, of, again, after every general election, you know, parties take time to retreat, to introspect, mm. to. Uh, rethink their strategy and after the 2022 general elections i think as a party we deliberately took time off to turn our eyes inwards uh, because of that moment of introspection uh, together with the chairman we have not been actively on the streets hmm. uh, especially in platforms that ordinarily as a journalist you would interact with us with the notoriety but I think that now that we are getting to almost two years after elections, the things we have been doing in that moment of introspection, uh, the time has come to roll them out. In rolling them out, you are going to see a lot of activities from Kanu. Because, again, mm. we believe legitimately that we are a government in waiting. Mm. Okay, yes. let's do this. I mean, we've uh, again, we talk about the would-be's and the ideal situation and yes. how things should be, you know, inspiration, motivation to yes. get young people involved. And I really do feel that, not just young people, but every citizen of the country, yes. we must have citizen-based governance. Yes. We, it, it's, we talked about this at length yesterday. Yes. And I think that most times the vehicle that delivers this is political parties. True. I think we often often don't see the strength that lies in that if done the right way yes if done the, the right, right way, way yes. and i'm going to say the third time if done the right way because i think many times we missed the mark yes but looking at the country today and i think oftentimes we need to put things in context because mm. we can be inspirational and say this is where we want to be yes. in 10 years time the yeah. party will deliver 1000 strong youth who will do no mm. today mm. in where the end and now where there are so many situations that are going haywire, haywire. Mm. whereby the economy many would say all right is tanking mm. whereby there are opportunities mm. for governance mm. of an authentic nature to take place mm. what should be done what place then would be played by the folks who are going to go through this program that you talk about mm. that at the end of the day you will deliver them and mm. say here country take mm. What would they do? How would they deliver? How would we see situations like Ghana that are going haywire then essentially be tweaked to operate in the way in which they were originally designed for? How do we place these individuals in these positions whereby we can see progress? And I think if we're not asking or answering those questions, then we're just talking about things in the stratosphere of the possible. But it is not here now, mm. and if we cannot, env if we cannot see that this is how it would actually work, this is what we would do. Yes. Then we, perhaps we need to, you know, work yeah. it a little bit more. So how would they? What would they do? Where would they be? Are we saying now we're going to deliver them, let them run to be governors, senators, members of parliament, members of the county assemblies? What What are we saying exactly? But why run do when there are issues in the country that require voices? This is what I'm saying. How would they be present? How would they be presented yes. and say, where would you lend your voice after having gone through these processes? Mm. Where do we see them in Kenya? Yes. Mm. I think that do number one, you know that um, we speak. Can you speak? We speak through writing. We speak through channels like this. We speak through our campus league uh, meetings. Mm -hmm. We speak through our branch meetings because we visit the branches. We speak through young people who, of course, already have decided to express interest mm -hmm. to run for office. Mm -hmm. 
again, I know that part of your frustration mm. could be that you do not see us in the streets because that is a brand of politics that is very popular around here. But then again, we think that in the last one year, it has been imperative that we give the government of the day a chance to implement its manifesto. Mm -hmm. And so I think that so that in the moment it has been doing its work, we've also, again, as I said earlier, we've been busy introspecting, mm. looking, remember that our, um, we, our party does not deserve its name, is not worth its name, if it doesn't have representatives in the, in, in the, in the county assemblies for, um, in the National Assembly, yeah. in the Senate, if it does not produce a presidential candidate. Mm. So these are things that, remember, we didn't run in 2013, we didn't, I mean, I mean in, 20, in 2013, right. yes, we were, we, we, were, we were running met mm. instead of a candidate. In 2017, we didn't run. In 2022, we didn't run. Mm. So those are things we must begin asking ourselves very uh, seriously. That are we running in 2027 or not? And when you say running, we're talking about just the presidency. Presidential race. Yes, the presidency. And, and, and everything else doesn't matter? No, everything else matters and do. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I'm saying is that, of course, we've got young people that are going to run. Okay. These, yeah, these young people, we need to build their capacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is work that already is going on within the party. Mm -hmm. Those who are running for senatorial position, for MP positions and other positions. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these are young people that, of course, we are working very tirelessly mm -hmm. to build their capacities, okay. to make sure that they appreciate the environment they are going to interact with. Yeah. So in, I think, in a small way, as a party, we are doing our fair share to make sure that we do that which needs to be done. I think you're in a unique position at this time because like you said, having been away from the stage maybe you didn't put it in those words, but okay having been away from the stage, truly if the interest is to make the country a better place yes. for livelihoods, economy, etc, etc yes. governance having been away and then seeing how things have been, I think you're placed in a unique opportunity, you have a unique opportunity to then be able to deliver the kind of citizen-based governance that we talk about that yes. needs to actually happen, not just in Kenya, yes. but in different countries around the world, whereby you say, okay, well, we can step back in and say, how about we, this is what we ought to deliver. The leader that people are looking for, that Kenyans are looking for, that they can coalesce around, yes. and that they can demand things of and be accountable, that that, that leader can be accountable to its people. Yes. And the question then is, how will you take up that opportunity and insist on it? And not for personal gain yes. or political expediency, yes. but for Kenya. Yes. A again, I think that, Mr. Sandu, I understand your frustration. But then my, uh, my position again is this, mm -hmm. that the party has given the young people a chance to develop their talent because it, it would be meaningless mm -hmm. to deploy young people whose capacity you've not built. Mm -hmm. Sure. So what the party is doing at this very moment, mm -hmm. young people who can step forward and run for office, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we can have a young person running for the presidency in the next election can only happen if we develop the capacity of these young people. Mm -hmm. That is precisely what the party is doing. Yes. You know, opportunity, they say, waits for no man or woman, for that matter. But when a country is going through the sort of birth pangs that I was going through, mm -hmm. politically, those are opportunities. I know. How is Kanu taking advantage of these opportunities? Kanu is taking advantage of this opportunity in this sense. One, again, we must appreciate the fact that all politics are local. Mm. And uh, you know that chairman, our party, part of our constituency is the pastoralist communities. Mm. That being part of our constituency, we think that before we disrupt anything, we give the government a chance to implement its programs for the pastoralist community among other areas. Because we think that when we can improve the lot of the citizens of Kenya, Mm. It, that we don't have to take credit for it. But what is at the very core of Kano is that we have improved the lot of everyone. Okay. So until we are certain that those strategies are, going, are not going to work, then we may want to offer alternatives. Okay. As at this very moment, mm. I th again, I said that we are keen in developing capacities of our young people. Within the party. Within the party. Working in the back room.
Mm-hmm. Kidi, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Eric. Kidi Mwaga is the Secretary for Policy and Legislative Affairs of KANU, the oldest political party. He's been our guest. We've been talking about party, political party politics in this country from a perspective of KANU. Keep it here for more conversations. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.